Welcome back to World War II TV, folks. And the end of this little series of four shows concerning spies and secrecy. We've got one more show tomorrow, but a separate one about a female war correspondent. But today, uh, and if you're new to the channel, there's been a few new members over the last few days. Thank you very much. Don't forget, all the information you always need is in the description below. You'll find links to my guests' websites, the books they talk about, merchandise links, etc., etc. Anyway, the breaking of the German Enigma code was all due to Bletchley Park, right? Well, today we will learn how a Polish mathematician and cryptologist played a vital role too. My special guest will tell us more. Good evening, Robert. How are you today? Good evening. Thank you very well. Thank you for having me. So before we get in uh, going with your presentation, I like to ask new guests how they define themselves. Some people think of themselves as a sort of classic military historian. Other people are archivists, researchers. Um, how do you define yourself, Robert? Yeah, uh, I would define myself as academic, but um, mostly work at about public administration. So it's uh, maybe quite unusual uh, in your uh, TV channel. Well, we take people from everywhere. As long as they've got a point of view, it's all good. And it's the different points of view that I think that sets sometimes World War II TV apart is that military historians think about things in one particular way. And the subject we're talking about today was because people came together with different ways of thinking about the, pro the problem. but. Um, folks, we'll do questions as we go along today. Robert has come armed with a PowerPoint he's in charge of. I'm going to learn about this incredible Polish um, genius who was who was um, so important to this story. So, so over to you, Robert. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so welcome, everyone. I uh, prepared a short presentation about Marian Rejewski, who was the first Enigma codebreaker. Uh, I devoted my latest book uh, to him. Uh, however, I don't want to. Uh, present it as a lecture so if you've got any question during my presentation feel free to uh, to ask to send them uh, so I'll start maybe a quite uh, in a quite a different way not starting from when Marian Rejewski was born and things like that but maybe about the cryptology or uh, this uh, the role of uh, um, uh, security and safety uh, in a longer context. So uh, here you can find an annex of Tadeusz Burzyński. He was the first Polish envoy to the Great Britain, maybe not the first, but one of the first, uh, who sent a message from London to Warsaw. Uh, and uh, as you can see, he translates on the left-hand side, you can see his uh, letter but on the right hand side uh, how he uh, coded this into numbers so uh, it shows you that uh, thinking about secure way to uh, pass your um, message uh, it wasn't uh, you know the 20th century uh, of course challenge it was uh, actually we can start the story from ancient time and uh, look at cryptology how they evolved uh, or was evolving during centuries uh, however for a very long time it was uh, it was it was mostly based on changing the word order or the letter order so uh, uh, many uh, code breakers uh, graduated from philology or just uh, fluent knowledge uh, uh, on uh, language, uh, your, your neighbor country mostly. Uh, of course, not only speaking fluently in this foreign language, but also, you know, learn or deeply learn the logic, grammar and uh, uh, habits of uh, communication because you need to find some kind of pattern how this message you can try to find something that helps you to uh, to find the correct war order. So um, it was at the beginning, I would say, even maybe quite easy. You have to be, of course, clever, uh, learn fluent, uh, have you know, fluency in this language. And when you know that it is from a message uh, sent from one army unit to another, so you can expect some kind of words. And then when you decode, the, the, define this word, and you know that this uh, foreign language got uh, something like like 24, 26 letters, then step by step, you can find uh, or decode this message. Yeah? And for a very long time, it was uh, it was far from uh, logic skills or maybe mathematicians, uh, uh, mathematics. It was 
uh, it was much more uh, for people who are fluent in learning foreign languages. So, um, uh, so that was for uh, for 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 ages the the way how cryptology. Uh, was evolving but then just let's jump to the beginning of or just shortly after this first world war and uh, as you may know poland uh, regained the, the uh, regained their independence uh, after 123 years uh, poland was partitioned uh, for three parts uh, russian prussian or german and austro hungarian so some parts of poland was even under uh, this partition for longer than 120 years however when we regain our independence uh, I said our because I'm um, I'm a Polish person as well. Um, a huge challenge was to build country from scratch, actually, because you've got three different uh, three different parts uh, ruled by different set of rules, different legal uh, 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 legal order. Uh, you can imagine that after a few decades, uh, this this country changed completely. Uh, however, this threat from Russia was uh, was of course of course on the top of the agenda. And uh, after uh, communist revolution, uh, this uh, threat for whole Europe was, uh, you know, really serious. And uh, that's not an accident, or just not. Uh, it's it's a very common phrase that the war, so the, the battle of Warsaw in 1920 changed the direction of history mm -hmm. in. in the of 20th century and why uh, we've done this just after two years after the uh, gaining in the, uh, regaining independence was this guy in the middle it is a colonel uh, uh, Kowalewski who uh, uh, who decode Russian uh, messages and you can uh, find one of them on the right hand side so uh, actually he uh, he replaced his friend because uh, he, uh, his friend got uh, workmate uh, got uh, wedding of his daughter uh, of his sister and you know just waiting and spending his time at work he decoded this Russian or Soviet messages and that was the idea that uh, helped us or allowed Poles to uh, win over uh, Soviet army so uh, that was like uh, absolutely absolutely great tip for Polish general stuff that uh, we have to uh, develop this kind of skills because we are still, you know, uh, developing and we need time to build strength uh, and, uh, and you know, as, as I said, build everything from scratch. Uh, so this kind of intelligence uh, might be crucial uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, for, for, for survival. And I guess, I guess, Robert, it's a classic force multiplier. You know, your, your exactly. Poland was surrounded by potential hostile nations has, have, and had been for centuries. And if you are, uh, ha Poland has an ability to create codes, break codes, and, and, and understand what the enemy are thinking, it gives you an advantage on the ground, in the air, and on the sea. So you can understand yeah. why a country surrounded on all sides like that would, would yeah. put attention into this. Yeah, thank you yeah. for explaining. So, yeah, exactly. So having said that, uh, uh, you can add it that uh, you can add that uh, you know uh, many Poles speak fluently German, Russian. So when you uh, just combine these two pieces, so uh, uh, cryptology based on language skills and uh, this uh, kind of awareness and uh, work on uh, uh, this decrypting uh, your enemy's codes you you've got you've got some kind of strength or advantage over them uh, so uh, it was it was absolutely crucial during uh, or after the first world war and then of course after the or during the second world war because many you know german people actually can't differentiate Poles from Germans because when you grow up and was born in, uh, you know, in actually a German part of uh, Poland, then you of course, your language in school was uh, at school was German, so that you, you've got bilingual uh, um, uh, people from, uh, from 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 the beginning, and then we've got, of course, in the mid twenties, this shift in cryptology. 
So it was well, it was first time when German uh, applied different kind of uh, machine or the, the, the first kind of machine to uh, to send their messages. Of course, it wasn't the German invention because uh, history of Enigma is much much uh, started uh, actually in uh, 1918 and it was. Uh, a commercial machine and uh, Germans just use it and uh, add new pieces to make it much more complicated. However, uh, you know, at, uh, at, the, at the, the, the very point, uh, a lot of countries just lost uh, the grip, I would say. They, they've got a huge problem to read German messages. And uh, Pulse was, uh, of course, one of them. Uh, it wasn't, of course, at the beginning, because firstly, this kind of machines was introduced in a uh, Navy. Uh, Poland isn't a Navy country, uh, so uh, so we need some time to figure out the change. However, uh, there was this knowledge and awareness that something went wrong, and our cryptologists were simply, you know, uh, blind and couldn't say anything. And uh, at the beginning, many. Uh, mathematicians from Western University said it's simply impossible to to crack the machine. So, uh, so they uh, uh, maybe when you start something from scratch, it's easier to introduce some experiments. So Polish general staff thought, yeah, we know that linguistic skills no longer. Uh, is is useful. So let's try to implement mathematics or different kind of knowledge uh, because uh, uh, actually when we starting from from zero, so it's easier to uh, to, to to change the approach. And uh, at, it, there, there were many, of course, important uh, I would say tips. So uh, during the history of uh, cracking Enigma in twenties that allow Poles to to, to finally succeed, uh, but uh, 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 but one of them was uh, a special course in uh, Poznan uh, for students of mathematics in uh, University of Poznan, uh, uh, conducted by general staff because they knew that they need someone on the point A who is fluent German, point B is gifted at the mathematics. So uh, they uh, they organized a uh, uh, course for Polish students and uh, chose three of them, the most gifted, the most fluent in uh, permutation theory. Uh, uh, I have to add that uh, uh, Poland was or was. Uh, uh, we, we are very happy because we've got a very, I would say, strong and influential school of mathematicians right. from Lviv. And uh, a lot of them uh, absolutely uh, change uh, some uh, aspects of mathematics, especially in permutation theory. So uh, this uh, professor from Lviv Polytechnics or Technical School uh, just moved to Poznan. And so he just, I would say, transferred his knowledge to Poznan and then um, he chose three of them. And uh, Marian Rejewski was one of them. So uh, the, 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 this trio uh, was asked just, uh, just in, during the... Uh, summer holiday in 1932 to move to Warsaw because there is a special task that they'd like to uh, um, uh, ask them to solve. Uh, at the beginning, they actually, of course, they wouldn't. They were completely unaware of what's going on. They thought they that it would be the same uh, what they've done in Poznan. Uh, but very quickly they realized that uh, the, the, this challenge is much more complicated. And uh, Marian Rejewski just uh, in September and October was asked by general staff uh, uh, if, he, if, it, if it's possible to stay longer and, uh, and make some over, uh, over uh, extra hours uh, because they've got uh, some uh, papers from French side and uh, 
and some technical details about uh, this machine and uh, and that was it so marian Rejewski combined these three elements he's a uh, you know a knowledge uh, mathematic in intuition uh, his german fluency and uh, of course he was very young because he just graduated uh, graduated university uh, just two years after that so you know you are very angry for success and uh, and um, uh, in, uh, in the uh, 20 uh, 31st of december 1932 Mar mariana rayevsky so it was actually eight week a few a few weeks before uh, adolf hitler came to power right. uh, mariana rayevsky broke uh, enigma and uh, this time was uh, it was very important to stress the precise date because uh, as Marian Rayevsky mentioned in his memoir uh, he realized that after that uh, Germans uh, introduced some changes uh, and uh, it, it would be much more complicated uh, to crack the enigma uh, if he uh, had started uh, uh, later mm. so uh so that was it and uh he uh he that was of course a huge achievement uh polish general staff knew that they've got a huge uh uh an, a huge uh, weapon in their hands uh, something that uh, allowed them to read german messages of course marian Rejewski just he his work was just to crack or show the precise setting of machine and leave it uh, and send it over so of course he uh, he wasn't aware about precise details uh, but uh, uh, that was uh, absolutely uh, I would say a focal point in this story so so we've got polls that uh, actually uh, seven uh, years before uh, the outbreak of uh, the Second World War they you know, uh, collected knowledge uh, Robert, moreover think, mm -hmm. just, just to interrupt do you think that there are people around today who think that the Enigma machine is just a single single machine whereas of course we realize it's a series of increased developments of sophistication and technology and mathematics you know, mathematics because as you were saying there in the 1920s it started off as a commercial gadget it yeah. was it was available for anyone who might need it to kind of purchase it and then over the years it was refined and improved and and the same thing about code breaking and cryptology is not we were talking before going live, folks, about the the imitation game moment when Alan Turing, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, has the eureka moment where they couldn't break the Enigma codes, and then suddenly, after you know, scratching their heads and sitting in an office, they they can they can break them. Whereas what you're reminding us is this is a series of progressive. It's a chess game between, in mm -hmm. some ways, of 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 a piece is lost, the piece is gained as as the as the game develops, so the rules uh, of the game change. Yeah, exactly. When you look at this machine, I'll move back on my presentation. So you've got on the top three rotors. Yeah. Uh, each of them you can uh, set in different order. You can change the order of rotors as well. Uh, as well, you can change also or improve this uh, uh, plug board as well. It it, it gives you much uh, more uh, combinations. So when you uh, actually add all of these elements, you've got you know thousands of combinations so you can do it uh, uh, by your own unit uh, tool to help you to uh, uh, falsify uh, uh, those settings that are not possible in this uh, message yeah so actually that was what uh, Marian Rejewski uh, did uh, he wouldn't say that's precisely this setting he said it's this 10 of settings that you can use so when you know that uh, you know, it's 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 ten settings. Uh, then uh, you can do it alone very quickly. Yeah? So, so right. that was his uh, his approach. So a few words about Marian Rejewski, who was born, as I said, uh, in uh, 
Bromberg, it was a German name of Bitgost, where I was born as well. So that's, of course, uh, uh, an, an explanation why I, why I choose this story. Um, yeah. So uh, you can see on the on left side his German uh, certificate from school. Uh, so he's, uh, he, that was for him uh, quite obvious that uh, he speak and he, he was bilingual. Uh, actually, his school, that was uh, interesting as well because he graduated from uh, high school, which was uh, the, the profile of the school was a curriculum was, was mostly devoted to uh, humanist uh, um, subjects. So, uh, you know, you've got a mathematician who's got, uh, who, who had a huge uh, linguistic and social uh, skills or knowledge as well, yes? Yeah? So after his school, his uh, A-level uh, uh, exam was uh, Latin, uh, Greek, mathematics, of course, German. So uh, uh, Marian Rejewski combined this, you know, a bunch of skills, not only in terms of mathematics, but also in terms of linguistic. So that was, you know, this transition between uh, different uh, uh different parts of uh, crypto of uh, cryptology evolution yeah so so you've got this 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 german brag background uh, uh, and, uh, and and here you've got some adverts of his father's uh, uh, store uh, uh, and uh, he was you know it was it was very difficult for Pauls to to live in Bitgost and bromberg they, they were uh, minor it will Paul Pauls one uh, was a minority, so it was really hard to uh, to preserve Polishness. To sp you are not allowed to speak Polish in public space, even so. Right. You know, oh, because yeah, German said it's it's not allowed. You so so you know having a Polish uh, shop and uh, Polish business and then uh, contribute to uh, Polish community that was a kind of uh, heroism or patriotism as well. Yeah, so so that's of course a different context of this uh, story. And then you've got on the right hand side his certificate from university uh, when he graduated from mathematics and. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, basically, and his uh, his final his thesis was just devoted to permutation theory, which he used in Enigma. So that was it. And he was very gifted. He was, of course, after a while. Uh, and then he moved for a, a one year, almost a year, a few months to Getin, uh, uh, Getinga. It was absolutely a capital of mathematics in right. the twenties. A lot of uh, Nobel Prize winners. Uh, uh, graduated from this university, of course, uh, due to this anti-Semitic campaign uh, launched by Germans. Uh, most of them moved to the U.S., but Marian Rejewski uh, got a chance to meet uh, met, uh, some of them, and uh, he came back to Poland with uh, with kind of uh, prediction that uh, this anti-Semitic campaign is something that may end up with very uh, 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 very difficult situation uh, for uh, uh, this anti-Semitic policy in, in Germany. Uh, so that that's his context, his family context. So unfortunately, his father died just uh, uh, several months after Poland regained independence. So, so he, he was uh, the only man in family. So he had to grow up much quicker mm. and uh, take responsibility for family, help uh, help his mother to uh, uh, to run the business. Uh, uh, it was, uh, of course, this, the, the, this element of uh, his personal story. And uh, coming back to the enigma, what's important when we're talking about Polish contribution is uh, that uh, it wasn't a, a one-shot event. It was just the beginning, the, the end of 1932. That was the beginning of... Uh, of, of, of the way how Poles developed the tools uh, to crack the enigma. So they start, as I said, and the, and on the top from pencil to machine approach. Yeah, because at the beginning they've got only this permutation theory, but after then uh, they create a Rayevsky's bomba, which was you know a combined six enigmas machine, 
And then you've got cycle matter that allows you to find the proper cycle in this permutation theory. And then you've got the Galski sheet uh, that uh, also was a way to uh, find uh, um, a proper setting. So you see that it's not only you know clever way of combining different pieces of knowledge, but also some technical skills behind this. So Polish general staff uh, employ the uh, uh, you know means and technicians and uh, uh, yeah, I would say technical knowledge to try to find a way to do it much quicker. Because as you know, Germans. Uh, uh, war strategy was blitzkrieg, so you don't have time mm, to yeah. reconsider or just you know find f uh, a few days to uh, to read the message. You actually you are you've got your lack of time, so each hour is important. So you know, uh, so at the end, uh, uh, Pauls uh, uh, was able to or could uh, just you know. Uh, uh, the start competition machine again machine that sounds like 21st century story actually yeah uh, so uh yeah and all of this was of course really really important uh, when it comes to uh following german uh uh, uh uh, German, I would say, improvement of uh, Enigma, yeah, because they, of course, as I said, uh, added new rotors or uh, uh, change uh, settings of Enigma much quicker and uh, uh, much more frequent. Uh, so uh, you need to, you know, uh, work or invent new tools to crack the Enigma. Yeah, unfortunately, at the end of 1938. Poles, Poles just slowly but consequently lost the, their ability to crack the Enigma because uh, German uh, invest more in Enigma and uh, and uh, mm, and add new routers and it means that your tools just uh, you know Poles general staff was run out of money so that was the problem so um it was much more complicated to uh, uh, to succeed it, uh, in cracking the enigma. So the first meeting between uh, Brits, French, and Poles was in, in uh, at the beginning of 1939 in Paris. That was just the first meeting. I would say introducing meeting, nothing special uh, happened there. Uh, but then just uh, a few weeks before the second, uh, the outbreak of the Second World War, in the meeting, uh, meeting during the meeting in Perry, uh, now it's a part of war. So, uh, uh, Poles uh, invited uh, Brits and uh, French uh, to, to pass their knowledge. And you can find in Bletchley Park uh, even a letter from Polish uh, Brit uh, British colleagues uh, who very quickly re reported to uh, to London that Poles knew everything and they've got tools and they were quite uh, uh, I would say amazed or maybe a bit angry that uh, that uh, that they uh, didn't find a way to uh, to succeed. Uh, um, uh, before, uh, so so the Polish trio uh, just uh, met with uh, the um, code breaking colleagues and showed them everything. Moreover, they just make them present and and uh, gave them an Enigma machine. Uh, so that was, I would say, what we call uh, passing. As the bottom to uh, to uh, to good expression. Uh, to others, yep. yeah, that's that's a good expression because it tells that uh, uh, it was uh, I'd say international corporations, uh, and that was when. Uh, uh, you can transfer this knowledge to other countries. Of course, they made an agreement that Poles will, whatever happen uh, in the future, Poles will uh, advance and uh, uh, will work on uh, um, and this theoretical part of this machine. Uh, Brits will uh, uh, work on this technical part and uh, French use their, uh, I would say, uh, uh, secret service uh, capacity to... Um, uh, learn as much as possible from German uh, 
uh, side. So, yeah. uh, of course, the problem was that uh, the war uh, started just uh, two weeks after this event, and uh, it was hard to uh, follow this this plan. And uh, uh, what you see on the slide is uh, places there are places where uh, Poles move because they move at the beginning of September 1939 to Romania, then to France, spend a lot of time, actually until 1933. And in June, at the beginning of August 1933, uh, moved to uh, to the UK. Yeah, of course, it was a very important meeting during the war. So in January 1940, uh, Marin Rayevsky and his colleagues met with Alan Turing, and uh, Alan Turing uh, uh, got this uh, Zagalski sheet. And uh, uh, they together broke the enigma. So uh, Alan Turing uh, just learned the, the mechanic and the, the Polish approach, uh, how to deal with enigma. So when uh, uh, he came back to Bletchley, uh, um, he was uh, uh, he was uh, you know uh, much more uh, better prepared to. Uh, uh, to invent his bombs, uh, Turing's bomb. Uh, so uh, of course that was that was it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, um, uh, only two of them moved to the UK because Jerzy Ruzicki died uh, in, uh, uh, in a terrible accident on the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, however, Poles never joined. Uh, British code breakers in Bletchley Park. They work for a Polish army uh, in exile in Boxmoor. They spend some time in uh, Scotland, and uh, that was uh, actually they 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 uh, they didn't have a chance to use their knowledge and experience. That's of course another story or kind of alternative story. Why it was that like that, but uh, but that's 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 uh, that was uh, uh, this uh, the context of of the story, and uh, of course then after the Second World War there was a question what next yeah and uh, a lot of Poles as you know stayed here in the UK yeah. more than one hundred thousand uh, choosing resentment camp to learn uh, English to. Uh, 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 just get some skills and and uh, just go to work. And uh, um, Henrik Zegarski uh, stayed in the UK. He fell in love in uh, 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 in uh, uh, Mrs. Blowfield. Uh, unfortunately, he had to uh, graduate at mathematics. Uh, again, because it, it wasn't a system to honorate or to just accept his mathematician skills. So that was a kind of uh, that was a, that, that was what he experienced, and uh, and then he uh, he started his academic careers at Surrey University. And when it comes to Marian Rejewski, he decided to move back to Poland. And it was 1936, the end of this year. So, of course, it was a difficult situation for him because uh, he left in Poland his wife and two children. And uh, the first, uh, uh, the boy was uh, uh, four years. The, his, uh, 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 his daughter was just... Uh, six months when he left Warsaw. Uh, his wife and two children stay in Warsaw, so you can imagine how horrific uh, experience it was during the Warsaw Uprising and uh, and uh, this German occupation and bombarding and things like that. So that was, of course, I would say a kind of uh, miracle that uh, she survived this war mm -hmm. with a quite good health condition meaning she 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 wasn't uh, uh you know uh experience in the german or uh, um, 
uh, so with bad treatment just just uh, just have a chance to uh, to live in a good condition but that was of course uh, uh, a miracle as i said and she moved back to bitgosht uh, because her parents stayed there they of course moved to uh, another place because uh, his her uh, her uh, father was a dentist that was a very good occupation and quite well paid so uh, unfortunately when the, he they moved back to their flat it was you know um they've got some new neighbors because as you know when during the second world war was ruined so you just can't you, you couldn't come back to your home your flat you've got some new people living with you so you've got before the war you've got quite a decent uh, uh living uh, conditions and you can uh, you know be a dentist uh, be a dentist but after that the problem was that you've got uh, another people living with you so marian Rejewski, of course he was uh, he knew about the current situation in Poland and many people and his wife uh, sent him uh, letters and uh, he knew that iron curtain was just uh, in place uh, it was after uh, famous Winston Churchill speech in Fulton about uh, iron curtain so he knew that he for him it's starting from nothing yeah he was 40 and uh, absolutely no chance to say anyone about his achievement uh, communists just consolidated the, their power their political system they completely change a criminal code so mm -hmm. when they find your any connections with west just just stay in this uh, term uh, you risk everything uh, uh, starting from, uh, you know, sending in custody in prison or just uh, death sentence. Uh, so he had to be completely silenced for many uh, de decades. Uh, of course, Secret Service uh, slowly but consequently, I would say, connected the dots and figure out that there are some code break. They, 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 uh, it was some code breaking work before the war. So they started uh, looking for people uh, just uh, working on this uh, issue. So Secret Service just, uh, I would say, follow uh, Marian Rejewski. He was aware that his letters was uh, written that, uh, for example, he, he lost a job because one of his colleagues was very, I would say, talkative and very open to share his uh, comments about current political situation in Poland. So uh, he knew that uh, uh, it was it was completely uh, danger and uh, unpredictable, uh, unpredictable uh, situation. So uh, his uh, uh, his members or family were just uh, uh, mm, you know uh, interrupted by secret service. Mm -hmm. So you, you can imagine this this kind of uh, totalitarian regime practices. Yeah. Uh, how how difficult it was for him and uh, in his one of his private letter that I uh, that I. Uh, uh, read uh, thanks to his uh, daughter who uh, shared with me his uh, his private letters he said that that was uh, at the end he he is happy that he joined uh, his family and everyone uh, survived this war with quite a I would say good condition however what he missed uh, most is his work his passion to cryptology and mathematics mm. because he was just a uh, accountant in uh, a state company yeah so you can imagine that he was doing you know very simple maths and uh, and uh, you know you can't be uh, yourself in this situation you have to be very careful you can't go for a beer with your friends after work because that's that, that, that may put you in uh, uncomfort uncomfortable questions for example yeah what what you've done before uh, 
uh, the Second World War. So uh, that was it. So and for a very long time, he thought that it was uh, that that would be how his uh, life uh, will look like. Uh, at the end of sixties, uh, uh, he he wrote uh, memoirs uh, to. Uh, um, uh, to Polish army because it was of course it was after Stalin death after after a different uh, political turmoil in Poland and he wrote uh, he, uh, he wrote his memoir where he directly say I was the one who broke the enigma uh, that was you know just 1968 um, just a few days before this March turmoil in Poland, this anti-Semitic uh, mm. uh, situation or, or, or crisis in Poland. So probably no one take care about his, <laughs> uh, his story and actually no one reacted. And uh, so that was, that was quite a strange to story. But uh, uh, when the situation changed, it was 70s. So you've got two books actually. The first one was Gustav Bertrand, Enigma, uh, uh, it was a retired uh, French general. He, he was a part of this uh, meeting uh, in Paris and uh, before that in Paris. And this book is, is written in French and maybe it's not, uh, it's not a very valuable source of historical knowledge. However, what was important, what is important is that uh, he uh, uh, he writes Paul's broke the Enigma machine many years before the Second World War. And it was, of course, a different situation because, you know, he was, of course, a French uh, speaker. Yeah. So uh, there is much greater chances that someone will read it and uh, start to uh, uh, comment it. And um, uh, uh, in the same time, you've got the book written by uh, or wrote by uh, um, Frederick Winterbolham, the, the Ultra Secret. Uh, when you've got this fake story yeah, about Polish contribution, that the Polish mechanics had been employed in the factory in Eastern Germany. He took careful note on the various parts of machine. He began to make it mock up and machine. So that was the beginning of this, uh, 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 let's say, a problem or this issue of who was the first and, uh, and another kind of narrative. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, as I said, many Poles stay in, in the UK after the Second World War, and uh, uh, some of them uh, just dropped a uh, line to Winter Bodham saying he, you are you you are wrong. It mm. wasn't uh, it wasn't like that. Uh, he answered that uh, he was not aware of it, and he uh, he uh, his book is about his memoirs and his uh, best knowledge, and in the uh, say uh, an American or second edition uh, in the footnote he he wrote that uh, leaving the same uh, part of text there is a comment that uh, uh, um, Polish uh, uh, colonel uh, dropped him a line about Polish contribution but he is uh, he can't um, Mm, uh, check it. So that's that. That was it. And of course, as you as you can imagine, these two books just uh, that was the beginning of a huge row about Enigma. So in Polish press, you find a lot of uh, 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 pieces of. Uh, information just calling we are looking for someone who uh, who know anything about enigma and of course many people uh, uh, share their knowledge because uh, as Bletchley Park was let's say kind of a company meaning a huge organization where a lot of people were involved uh, in, in, in work there so uh, in, in, of course it wasn't like that but of course in a very similar situation was in Poland you've, as I said you You've got mathematicians, you've got some technicians, so that it's not only Marian Rejewski. And uh, so, so, so some people uh, reacted to these uh, pieces of uh, uh, information in newspaper, but uh, Marian Rejewski during one day just dropped a line saying, 
I was the one who broke the enigma <laughs> many years before the Second World War, and you can see this letter on my right, right hand side. And if you are interested in, in learning more details, just come along and I will share with you my knowledge. And of course, as you can imagine, that was uh, his great comeback, yeah, because he was uh, uh, interviewed by many different uh, newspapers, uh, Russian, of course, but also uh, German, uh, English one, and many others. So uh, his home was kind of, you know, uh, um, revolving doors. So many people just coming mm. just to see. And of course, when you read it, and uh, uh, you can imagine that, you know, that's that was a very... Uh, it was it was a lack of knowledge about what Enigma was and could you explain you know the simple things and it wasn't so easy to to grasp this and uh, this um uh, this story for Marian Rejewski that was of course a very uh very good time he can he can uh, uh, share his story and uh, also find contacts with many of his friends from this year so from uh, university times from from the uh, he he exchanged letters with Henrik Zegalski uh, asking <laughs> in one of them do you remember this guy from uh, from the UK in Paris in uh, January 1940 who, who what was his name of course he was asking about Alan Turing and <laughs> so uh, that was of course a huge uh, I would say reward for Marian Rejewski and of course uh, that was a great chance to learn more about his achievement because Mm. Uh, that was the time when he learned what was the real contribution uh, he made and his colleagues he always presented in this way that was a team effort it, he never said it was me uh, it was uh, it was it was me Henrik and Jerzy uh, who uh, cracked the enigma so uh, he knew that he you know, would say the child change the course of history and uh, so so you know a lot of letters happily he was you know he was you know very terrible in handwriting uh, handwriting so a lot of letters are just type on uh, on machine so i got a chance to read all of them uh, on that that and that i um that uh, his uh, daughter uh, collected uh, so yeah so you've got a um, lot of uh, papers Papers, reports. Some of them just moved to. Uh, he sent to uh, to London. Uh, you've got his memoir in, uh, in English as well. So uh, so yeah. So that was of course uh, his work at, until the end of his life. He died in uh, 1980. So 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 for seven years he was on the top. Um, Mm. Uh, on this story so yeah so at the end uh, uh Dermot Turing read a really fascinating story about how how what is the real story of Enigma and how how was it broken I wrote the book about Marian Rejewski and it's of course uh, a personal story about him about his family about his uh, experiences so when you are more interested in Enigma story then uh, Alan Turing's uh, book is, uh, is, is is for you if you are looking for the story of human story of the first enigma code breaker so i would uh, uh, suggest might <laughs> but uh, that's uh, that's it of course there are a lot of uh, you know um, uh, additional stories uh, that i uh, i can present but i don't want to uh, as i said you know just just give a lecture and i'm happy to answer for any questions well, it's been brilliant stuff, Robert, and I, I, I said I was going to interrupt you, but in the end I didn't. And it, I think it's truly fascinating that the, the, the Turing family via, now connected with, with people like yourself in Poland, bringing these stories together again, because the, the phrase I'm going to come back to that you used is, is passing on the baton, because I think it's a very apt description for what was happening back then in that, in that process in the sort of 38, 39, 40 period, is that the Poles had taken their work to a certain point, and then kind of handed over, and then the British and others took it on to a, to another point, and and it's it's that evolution, not revolution, that we kind of mentioned earlier. But we'll yeah. we'll do a few questions, specific ones. So, 
Um, this is going back to what the polls are doing in the 1930s. So Samuel Thompson says, did the polls figure out the plug boards? Didn't the polls come up with the sheets of paper with holes and lights shining through them, the, the sheets you talked about? So did they have a good idea of the of the different mechanisms that made up an egg machine? Uh, yeah, when it comes to uh, plug boards, uh, important thing was that Marianevsky was aware that plug board doesn't change this uh, or doesn't make any difference in terms of his permutation theory. Of course, it introduced some more variations, but it doesn't mean that it changed this uh, uh, cycles, and uh, that was it. So at the beginning, when you know that you've got only uh, six plugs, that was very easy to do it here alone and just experiment uh, this on that. Of course, it was much more complicated when they uh, when German introduced twelve plugs. That make it much more complicated. Mm. But uh, the, the most important thing is that it doesn't change anyway, and this uh, it wasn't it doesn't make any difference in terms of the permutation theory. Yeah, so that was it. Uh, when it comes to this other the to the to this, uh, I'd say another approach is that Apple's uh, invented. That was uh, completely their story. Uh, they they work and afford it, and their I would say imagination. They they work very closely with uh, technicians from Ava company. That was uh, um, a company uh, which uh, which uh, uh, work very closely with Polish army, and uh, one of CEO was uh, very gifted uh, technicians, and uh, he was from a uh, German uh, uh, partition part, so he he read through Germans as well. So you know there are many this I'd say uh, uh, variables that come together and uh, ended up with this success. Success. Okay, thank you. Now my next question is: there's one for me, and there's one um, adding some from the viewers as well, and it's. You know, we, we talked about before going live about how massive Bletchley Park was. Uh, you know, was it 9,000 there in total? Mm, yeah. Um, what, why don't you think, why, why were the Poles not given their own department at Bletchley? What, why, I know they carried on for the war effort elsewhere and he was given, you know, British army rank, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't understand why. You just get rid of them. I mean, there's there's enough space. Give them an office and say, can you just carry on doing what you're doing? What's what's your reason behind that? Yeah, that's that's a really interesting uh, question. It's I think hard to find the final answer for this question. But there are, I would say, a few factors. The first one is that when Pauls uh, move to uh, the UK, Alan Turing wasn't uh, uh, at Bletchley Park. Right. So he and those who participated in meeting uh, in meeting in Pere, uh, uh, they weren't in Bletchley Park. So I think that the knowledge about Polish contribution in breaking the Enigma code was quite limited, and I think that those who uh, uh, was you know uh, at, at helm of Bletchley Park may think mm. it may have quite a different. Uh, you know, story, uh, or think about quite a different, uh, in a different way. Yes. Yeah? So, so that the first thing. The second one, uh, the second, I would say, purely political was that in July 1933, General Sikorsky died in plane crash, and he was a straw. He 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 got a very good, uh, I would say, relations with Winston Churchill. Marian Rajewski uh, come to Gibraltar where this uh, plane crash happened just a few days after that. And why I mention it is that uh, it was a new opening in terms of Polish-British relations because then you've got Soviet on the board. So this power politics changed a bit and uh, Poles wasn't on the forefront on this mm. uh, uh, British-German competition because you've got uh, 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 um, Stalin on your side. So Poles was one of this great coalition and uh, that, and that, that, that I think that, that that was important as well. So uh, you've got a new uh, 
Polish leadership in exile yeah. at the same time. So you need some time, you know, to uh, to build a relation, to share this knowledge. As you can imagine, uh, knowledge about Polish contribution in Enigma was limited because there is, of course, need to know principle and yeah, no, this kind yeah. of uh, on, on this kind of knowledge. So I think that both of this uh, is important. That's a good point. And, uh, and Samuel is adding, uh, as a former army intelligence officer, no way I would have let the Poles work on Enigma at Blitzley Park too like it to be compromised by having family on the continent. So there's a there's a security um, aspect that perhaps we're not thinking about as well. Uh, and, you know, there, there's a lot more at play than just a simple mathematical problem of breaking codes. There's security, there's trust, there's, as you said, political diplomatic aspect behind it as well. Um, another question that was asked earlier about when he returned to Poland after the war, um, having been in the UK, what kind of cover story did he go back with? Did the British give him it? Because because the British didn't know about a nigger. Could, what, could they have given him something that he was working for something rather? I mean, that's he just interesting. Kind of go yeah, back with nothing, of course. Or? Of course, you need to have some kind of uh, story uh, because it was, you know, that was the first thing that he was asked uh, when he uh, just uh, food a step in, in Gdańsk. Uh, so uh, he was lucky, actually, because uh, imagine that all of Paul, uh, that uh, great trio, uh, uh, um, uh, they weren't hired as, uh, they weren't part of army. It was right. civil uh, employees. So you can say I was just, you know, a civil, uh, uh, civil employee in Polish army, and we've done this or that. But uh, you know, you may say, okay, if you are not a uh, soldier, colonel, and you, you are not in any rank in Polish army, so probably it's not so, uh, let's say, important or so uh, uh, that 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 you may some uh, keep some secrets. So that that was it, yeah, and. Uh, hmm. Uh, Marian Rejewski, because when you look at this, uh, my presentation, there is a photo when he, 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 he were in uh, army suit. Uh, it was just in the UK. So, yeah. you know, there's a limited knowledge about this in the pol in Poland. So that was, I think, his strategy. Yeah. And, and of course, he was, he play or he present himself as a very silent person. And many of his uh, workmates said uh, he, he was just sitting and working and then they just say goodbye and come back, come back home. So, yeah, that was it. Well, thank you very much for that great answer. My last question to you is about um, kind of historiography. And, you know, you said at the beginning you're an academic. And I grew, I'm old enough to remember the era when we really knew nothing about Ultra and Bletchley Park. It was, it was still official secret. Then suddenly it exploded. And I was, you know, I've said on this channel several times, I couldn't believe how many different books there were about code breaking for sale at Bletchley Park. And, you know, it's it's almost been not over told the story, but it's it's very well known. So now you're bringing this aspect of, of the Polish contribution. Do you think things like the movie Imitation Game and before that we had Enigma with Kate Winslet and all these books and all these TV shows and it's out there that code breaking existed. It's out there that Bletchley Park was there. And Alan Turing is rightly regarded as a hero. Does that, does that very public aspect of the story help or hinder people like yourself trying to bring another aspect to the forefront? Hmm. That's that's interesting question. Uh, I would say that uh, actually that was the way how I uh, get interested in this story because it was a press conference of uh, director of Bank of England with note of uh, Alan Turing and then I said okay. Uh, uh, what about uh, Marian Rejewski? And then I mm. start, you know, digging. Uh, do we have any book about him? And I figure out that there are some, of course, publications about him. But that's some, I would say, uh, you know, short one. Uh, so uh, you know, this kind of. Uh, uh, films and uh, movies or uh, different uh, ways of uh, telling the story, I think, help.
jobs as to you know to get interested to to mm. go deeper to say and uh, to, 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 to just to check what what's, what was this the real story and uh, sometimes that of course uh, tell it better sometimes was but uh, at the end uh, especially that you know this cryptology and all this enigma story uh, and say got uh, many different angles yeah there was a social story and uh, of course this uh, the way how informatics evolve from the beginning how it started so you know i think that many people find something uh, for 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 yourself for themselves in this story so uh, for me, Marian Narevsky's story is interesting, not only in terms of uh, Enigma, but also because you can, uh, uh, I think, very interestingly uh, uh, tell Polish history yeah. by showing uh, his uh, uh, his story. Yeah. So he, uh, so he, nineteen oh eight when he was born, German part of uh, it was in Polish partition. Poles was bilingual. The, you know, very struggle to uh, to preserve their Polishness. Then you've got. Uh, uh, the, the 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 results of the first world war polish regained independence the second world war communist period mm. and so on so you've got one uh, one person and a lot of different sometimes really complicated for for Inus, uh, uh details that, that that's that's uh, important in our history well i mean a good way to end that with and that, and we're always trying to explain to people how how tough Poland had it. I mean, when I'm doing a Falaise Gap tour here in Norman, I show the statue of General Maciek there, and I say, there's a guy who was born pretty much in when in Europe was still empires, and he lives through two world wars, all the 50s and 60s and Cold War and 70s, and then ends up seeing, you know, freedom come back to Poland, but like four, 60 years after he first kind of envisaged it. it it's a really good reminder for us living in perhaps Britain or, or America how how tough Poland had it for such a long time, and not just Poland, but the people from the, the Czechoslovakia or Czech and, and Slovakia, their yeah. their their combatants in World War Two and what they went back to. Well, we'll end it there, Robert. It's been fantastic talking to you, folks. Yeah. The link to Robert's book is in the description below. You can buy it at your favorite bookstore or wherever you get your books. Um, it's been great talking to you. Thanks everybody for your questions. Thank you. This is Paul Woodhead from World War Two TV saying I'll see you all again tomorrow. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye.